everything you need to know about the Manafort indictment. The whole thing is confusing. Both sides are trying to spin it to fit their particular narrative. Democrats are trying to say, I told you so, there was Russian collusion. And Republicans are trying to say, nothing to see here, trying to make everything seem innocent. Well, here are the facts, and here's what you need to know to understand the whole thing. First of all, neither of those claims from either side, Republican or Democrat, neither is true. The most important thing is none of these charges against Paul Manafort have anything to do with the 2016 election or Russian interference or any collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. None of them. Even the mainstream media, who have been stirring an empty pot for the past year, trying to cook up collusion between Trump and the Russians, are admitting today that these charges against Manafort have nothing to do with the election. Okay, so what actually happened here then? What happened is former Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort was indicted this morning by special prosecutor Robert Mueller on 12 charges. These charges include conspiracy against the United States, conspiracy to launder money, failure to register as an agent of a foreign principal, false and misleading FARA statements. FARA, by the way, is the Foreign Agent Registration Act. Another count of false statements and seven counts of failure to file reports of foreign banks and financial accounts. So the important thing you need to know about the charges is the conspiracy against the U.S. is not related to Russian collusion. That charge means Manafort's work on behalf of a foreign government that he did not disclose to the U.S. government. And then he lied about it. It's similar to obstruction of justice. It's not a treason charge, though. So those are the charges in a nutshell. And they are serious charges, and Manafort deserves to be indicted for them. But they are not new. These are financial crimes reaching as far back as the early 2000s. The only part that happened during Trump's campaign, as far as we know right now, is Manafort lied to federal investigators during that time. The rest of the crimes were committed years ago, and the FBI was aware of Manafort's sketchy behavior, likewise, years ago. Of course, President Trump, when he was candidate, Trump should have vetted Manafort better. But to Trump's credit, he did fire Manafort when he found out about Manafort's ties to the pro-Russian Ukrainian president and all Manafort's dirty money tied up in this mess. It's also worth noting, when Manafort emailed the Trump campaign and offered his services as campaign manager for free, reports say it was Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner and Tom Barack who pushed Trump to accept the offer. More on that later, probably. Meanwhile, another Trump campaign advisor named George Papadopoulos pled guilty today to making false statements to the FBI related to his connection to Russia. This one is actually more serious than Manafort's indictments as it relates to the Trump administration, but I'm still not sure this is a smoking gun of any sort. This guy, Papadopoulos, reportedly offered, while in a meeting with Trump campaign officials, to facilitate a meeting between Trump and Putin. He claimed he had connections that could make that happen. It never happened. Reportedly, the Trump campaign responded with caution and skepticism, another credit to them. This may be a case of attempted collusion between the Russians and Papadopoulos, but it doesn't sound like any collusion between the Trump campaign itself and the Russians. Stay tuned as we find out more about this. Finally, and this is probably a large enough issue that we'll be digging into this later in the week, why does Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller have the sweeping and seemingly unlimited power to indict people on charges that have nothing to do with Russian interference in our election? Clearly, Manafort is sketchy. All indications point to the fact that he probably committed these crimes, even though he pled not guilty in court today. But Mueller himself was appointed to investigate Russia's influence in the 2016 election. Not to find crimes his FBI failed to bring to charges from years ago. This scares me. A man appointed because of politics. Remember, Mueller was appointed after former FBI Director James Comey was fired by Trump, and Comey leaked notes on his meeting with Trump to the press. Deputy Attorney General at the time, Rod Rosenstein, appointed Robert Mueller after Comey leaked those notes. So the whole thing was political to begin with. And it's very troubling to me how much unlimited power Mueller has since none of these charges have anything to do with Russian interference in our election. And then the bonus piece of information. We'll be covering this tomorrow. Tony Podesta, brother of John Podesta. John Podesta, as you remember, was Hillary Clinton's campaign chair. Tony Podesta quit his position at the Podesta Group today. Now, this is important because of the possible ties between the Podesta Group and Paul Manafort. We discussed this briefly last week. Paul Manafort had ties to Russian money, clearly. Manafort was also reportedly tied to John Podesta and the Podesta Group, who, of course, were tied to Hillary Clinton, who at the time was Secretary of State, right at the time when Hillary's State Department approved the sale of 20% of U.S. uranium supply to a Russian nuclear company. Much more on that tomorrow. But for now, that's what you need to know. And that is my final point. You can reach me on Twitter at Liz underscore. Democrats growing connection to the anti-Trump dossier.
I'm not an election law expert, Chris, but the good news is you don't have to be uh, to understand uh, the absurdity of believing that you can launder all of your campaign money by just hiring a law firm. So now there are reportedly some who are drawing a connection between President Obama and the law firm that funneled that money to Fusion GPS. So we'll break that down. We'll tell you what that's all about. Former Congressman Jason Chaffetz and Matt Bennett, a former deputy assistant to President Clinton, debate that next. Plus a new NFL protest. But this show of solidarity had nothing to do with disrespecting our country. Find out why they did it when we come back. We came together as a team and wanted to, you know, send a message. Um, and, and that's what we decided to do. And uh, I'm going to stand by my brother to do that. So new questions tonight about who paid what and when for the now infamous Trump dossier. There are new reports that an Obama-aligned group paid nearly a million dollars to that law firm that we've heard so much about in recent days. And the DNC and the Clinton campaign used to hire Fusion GPS to gather all their research. As Perkins Coy was sort of the middleman in a lot of these transactions. Trace Gallagher, live in our West Coast newsroom with the backstory. Hey, Trace. Hey, Martha. Yeah, Perkins Coie is the law firm, and the Federalist is now reporting that former President Obama's campaign organization paid Perkins Coie $972,000. And in reference to that story, President Trump tweeted the following, quote, report out that Obama campaign paid $972,000 to Fusion GPS. The firm also got $12,400,000, really, from DNC. Nobody knows who okayed. But it appears the president is making a connection that has yet to be established. Because while the Obama campaign reportedly did pay money to Perkins Coie, there is no evidence yet that Perkins Coie paid that money to Fusion. Now, it's significant because Hillary Clinton's campaign and the Democratic National Committee did pay $9 million to Perkins Coie, and in turn, that money was paid to Fusion GPS. That's when Fusion hired Christopher Steele, the former British intel officer who wrote the now infamous Steele dossier, a document filled with lurid allegations about Donald Trump that have been widely discredited. Meantime, the Washington Free Beacon is trying to get as far away from the dossier as possible. The Free Beacon does acknowledge initially hiring Fusion GPS to get dirt on then-candidate Donald Trump during the GOP primaries, but the conservative publication goes on to say, quoting here, the Free Beacon had no knowledge of or connection to the Steele dossier or provided payment for any work performed by Christopher Steele. But no connection to the Steele dossier does not mean the free beacon is back in the president's good graces. In fact, former White House chief strategist Steve Bannon has reportedly promised the president to, quote, go off the chain to destroy Whoa. hedge fund giant Paul Singer. <laughs> He's the man who finances the yeah. Washington free beacon. Bannon, I'm going off the chain against Singer, he said. Thank you very much, <laughs> Trace. Here with more, Jason Chaffetz, former House Oversight Committee chairman and Fox News contributor, and Matt Bennett, former deputy assistant to President Bill Clinton and co-founder of Third Way. Um, Jason, let me start with you. That What do you think about that, that Bannon quote? Uh, well, look, uh, when you have Republicans going after Republicans, look, the free beacon is just doing its background and its, its research. If there was an actual tie, then that would be one thing. But uh, Steve Bannon's free to do what he wants. He's in the public, private, public, private sector. He can do what he wants. So, Matt, um, in terms of the 10 to 12 million dollars that was funneled through Perkins Coie um, in order to fund this dossier through Fusion GPS, uh, many are saying that that's a clearer link uh, to trying to get help, get Russian help to influence the election than pretty much anything they've seen on the Trump side. Well, I don't know who these many are, but uh, here's a couple of things that are true. First of all, much of what is in the dossier, the U.S. intelligence services says is probably true. That's what Trace said. I, I don't think is right. Second, there is absolutely well, Christopher no Steele link. said that the whole thing was never verified and that it was never meant to be made public. Well, but uh, when asked, the CIA and others in the intelligence community have said that a lot of it's true. But the, but the point is this. What Steele was doing is talking to Russians uh, about what they, they knew of Trump. He wasn't necessarily talking to the Russian government. What, is, what the Mueller investigation is looking at is whether the Russian government was involved in some sort of direct involvement in U.S. elections, perhaps 
through a connection to the Trump campaign. Those are very, very different things. And, and let me just say about the Obama Most campaign. things lead to the government in Russia um, in, in one way or another. But uh, Jason, you want to respond to that? Well, yeah. I mean, you have the DNC. You have Hillary Clinton's campaign putting in more than $10 million, and nobody can seem to remember who authorized that, who did anything with it. Then you have Obama for America, about 20% of their expenditure in 2016, $972,000 goes to this law firm. Then you have somebody in the communications team at the White House, the Obama White House, whose husband happens to just work for Fusion uh, GPS. I'm sure that's all just a terrible coincidence, but suddenly now nobody can remember anything about whatever. And if you talk to Debbie Wasserman Schultz, I, boy, I don't remember that big expenditure. Well, Matt, what do you say? Uh, look. The Obama campaign uses Perkins Coie, as does virtually every campaign in Democratic politics, because they are the world's leading expert in election law. They were paying them to finish the work they were doing on the Obama campaign. It takes about 10 years to wind down a presidential campaign. So this idea that because they paid this gigantic multi-city law firm money that it necessarily was involved in this is nuts. There's absolutely no connection that anyone has made between the two. But that's why... You have to follow up with what Paul Ryan said was going to happen this week, which is the FBI giving Congress all of the financial documents so they can follow that financial trail. They have to yeah. get to that. And we're all in the wrong business. Uh, if you get paid for 10 years after the election, exactly. uh, that, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, Matt, thank you. I do want to ask Jason Chaffetz about some unkind comments that were made uh, in an exhaustive piece about the post-retirement uh, John Boehner, who obviously used to be Speaker of the House. Um, and here's what he said about you, Jason. Apparently, there's no love loss there. Gowdy, that's my guy. Even though he doesn't know how to dress, he says. Then Boehner leans back in his chair and says, blank Jordan, blank Chaffetz. They're both, well, you can read the rest. What uh, do you think about uh, that? Look, I, I hold no ill will towards, towards the speaker, uh, but I was a little surprised to, to see that. Uh, John Boehner supported my run for, for uh, a chairman of the Oversight Committee. I wouldn't have been the chairman if it weren't for, for John Boehner. But then there's a, an expectation from the senior most leadership that you hand over your voting card and you get in line and you support everything they did.